This project is Ulu Mau Pua Nui, and it means to continue to grow and perpetuate. Um, and Pua Nui is the name of the Ahupua'a. Why we're doing the project is to educate as many people as possible about the significance, the historical significance of the Kohala Field System, that the Kohala Field System is here, and um, how it fed the people in ancient times. And we feel that it can uh, inform future projects for food sustainability also. If we just look to the past and apply those practices to address our food needs for the future. 32 system. different Pahopoas mm -hmm. from, I think it's Mookini Heao to Pu Kahua. Um, and it goes down, not all the way to the coast, um, just above the coastline. And then it'll go almost to the valleys, but not all the way to the valleys. Each each Aupua probably was only about a hundred yards wide, and there's probably like 32 of them spread it out in this um, field system. And um, what was the Kohala field system most known for? Definitely for the sweet potatoes that it produced. And if we look at the geographic setup of the island, how it is, it's mostly dry. 95% of the island is dry. In ancient times, there were five producing um, Kalo, Lo'i areas, valleys. So Pololu would have been one of them, Waipio, Waiakea, and Waimanu. But it's all on this side here, the um, Kalo that was being produced. That, that, and there was upwards of 50,000 people on the island. So what were they eating? Those valleys wasn't enough to feed all of them. And, and two, the population was growing quickly. The sweet potato fields in Kohala became more comprehensive and productive after Western contact. And in Kau, that was in place before Western contact too. So that's three quarters of the island right there producing sweet potatoes. The girl we worked with, Aurora, um, told us there's 200 different varieties. When she was working with me, we had 20 of them different variety sweet potato. I have now 10 different varieties. Um, it's different color leaves, different color vines, potato difference. I was taught from my dad, his dad and my great grandfather, that we use the pigs um, to till the ground so it's easier for me so I don't have to do all the hard work. They'll till the ground, I'll come behind mound the ground, plant the sweet potato cuttings, um, wait till the potatoes are ready a good three, four months from the, from after we plant it, we'll harvest it. After harvesting, I'll put the potatoes, the pigs back where the potatoes were. They'll clean up whatever I missed, um, fertilize the ground, and then I'll put another batch of potatoes in, cuttings. He gets some more production when he plants in that area than if he had uh, harvested it by himself because there'd be like residual potatoes in there that the pigs get and so they clean it out so well that when he grows in there again he gets a good production of yeah, that. Exactly. The two crops grown here are uwala and sugarcane. Those are our two main crops. And uh, what was the really what's the relationship between the sugarcane and the uwala? Well the they work together in try because it's rain fed, the field system is rain fed only, unirrigated. Um, the and we get some rains here, lots of rains, lots of winds. The sugar cane grew tall and long grass plant, captured the moisture and gave them and kind of sprinkled it alongside the uala that was um, planted nearby. And the leaves were used for mulch, and it was also a deterrent for the wind. It wasn't a windbreak, but it did slow it down a little bit. So one of the our goals at, at, here at Pua Nui is to educate people about the Kohala field system and its historical significance as well as um, its potential for solving future pro the problems that we're having with food sustainability, um, food security.